your neck and do the work. You stand up, speak with your chest. Your dream is now reality. Can you survive the test? Oh, be careful what you wish for. You turn up, but you stop. Are you kidding me? You are a cultural icon, man. You brought hip hop and basketball together. Why do you think you had as much of an impact as you has had? I think people respect the fact that um, I'm satisfied and comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. It means a lot to my fans, the ones that really love me, the diehard ones, the ones that really care. Pound for pound, uh, the greatest player to ever, ever play. You can never question his heart, never question his, his will to want to win. When I give out turkeys, for Thanksgiving, when I give out Christmas presents, when I show up at hospitals, you don't hear about that. Right. You hear about all the negative Allen Iverson stories, because those ones sell, evil the, sell. The Iverson thing, I, Iverson is, I think, a guy, and I know I don't want to spend a ton of time on Iverson, but he's a guy that I think the gen, there's the biggest discrepancy between what the general public thinks of Iverson yeah. and what players yeah. think of Iverson. I mean, I, you know, to me, Iverson is my favorite. You know what I mean? Um, you know, people may not say he the, he's the greatest of all time, but he, he's, he's the greatest player to me because of what he represented for a culture of kids that yeah. came up that was like, you know what? Like, Uniform. I got, I got tattoos. You yes. know, like, I may not be able to play in the NBA. Like, I made a mistake in high school, and now it's like, I can be who I am. AI was a, a big part of me loving basketball. He just had that swag every time he stepped on the floor, like he was the best player on the court. Growing up, that's definitely somebody I idolized. That was my favorite player. Yes! You know, AI is you know, one, of the, one of the best guards to, to play this game. He was a small guard that just did it his way. He is the man! Me growing up, AI. Is everything about Iverson and, and the impact he's made on the game? I mean, to me, he's the uh, greatest competitor I've ever played against other than Michael. The most competitive player I've played against. Um, is that before the finals or just period? Period. Period. Why is that? That guy, that guy was a phenomenal competitor. He went after him. He went after him. He wasn't afraid of anything. And, you know, he, he attacked from, from the opening tip. And he competed like... He's still one of the uh, greatest players to ever play the game for a guy his size to do what he's done. Uh, it's just simply amazing. I mean, Allen's been incredible for the NBA. I mean, we're really lucky to have a player like him, a personality like him, uh, to be able to watch someone grow up the way we watched Allen grow up from a precocious star into a, you know, someone I think everyone really has gained a tremendous amount of uh, respect and affection for. You know, he's a really honest person, and uh, you know, I think that that is, is a great quality and a superstar. You know, despite uh, his stature, you know, and his you know his physical stature, you know, he probably has the biggest heart in the league. Fearless. It's, you know, Sixers uh, obviously to play in their history, and uh, you know, pound for pound, probably one of the best players that we've seen. And uh, you know, his heart, you know, could never be can never be judged. What he was able to give to uh, to this Sixers franchise, man, and. Uh, you know, I think anybody, anytime you bring Allen Iverson's name up, they will always think great things about him because of his ability to play the game at a high level every night. He changed the game. You know, he inspired a lot of uh, young guys, you know, to want to play basketball and be who they are. You know, just never changed for anybody. And uh, he's a great player. He's fun to watch, you know, fun to play against, and he's a great person. He brought style to the game of basketball. He brought flair. He brought, you know, the tattoos. He brought the braids. He brought... You know, guys feeling, he made guys feel good about themselves on the basketball court. Gave guys swag. Even right now to this day, everybody wants to be AI. Even little kids that never really saw AI play, everybody wants to be AI. Allen Iverson's competitive fire has been front and center in Philadelphia for a decade. And it isn't always confined to the basketball court. I've been through too much to let somebody with a pen and paper and a, and a microphone and a camera kill me or drive Allen Iverson crazy. I'm way too strong. So think about that when you write. Just, you know, when you're writing something, when you're writing the harshest article you can write about Allen Iverson, you better, you, hey, yo, you better write hard, hard, hard as you can. Because, but it, it ain't, gonna, ain't gonna do no good. Allen Iverson and the media. A relationship that has run the gamut of emotions, and one Iverson doesn't mind discussing. That's what y'all need to sell papers. That's what y'all need for people to, you know, look at your, um, your show or whatever. Y'all need that energy. Y'all need that negativity. 
and and I accept that and I understand that. It's just when it's deal, dealing with me, and it's something that's got to do with um, something in Philadelphia. If you throw Allen Iverson in the mix, that's big news. You can go into 7-Eleven now, and I don't think you'll find the Daily News or Inquirer or anything, because everybody wants to read about what Allen Iverson did so bad. When you see terrorism on the front page, and then you see all the deaths um, in, in Philadelphia on the local page, and then you get the, and, and all that negativity, then you get to the, 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 the sports page, and when, when it's supposed to be something gratifying, then you see even more negativity. You know, you see the Donovan thing, you see the T.O., and you see the trade talks with me. Iverson's every move over the past 10 years has been chronicled closely. Wherever he's gone, a large media contingent has been sure to follow. It's a reality he's learned to live with. I think that Allen has grown to um, accept the media's role. I think that um, he's basically a private person, but I think that he is willing to accept the responsibility that comes along with being a leader. I always uh, heard about the negativity um, before I got here and heard that it was the toughest place to play. And um, I honestly can say that that's true. And um, I'm kind of used to it, but it still bothers you when you when you hear it. I mean, if if, if your heart's not black, it bothers you. The part about being in the NBA is a dude like me dealing with the media. Mm -hmm. And when you feel like you're the villain and they just effing with you all the time. The world called me the MVP. He talking about getting rid of the MVP for. It used to bother me, man. You know what I mean? Like, when you know somebody is just trying to irritate you. You know what I mean? And you and you feel it in your heart. Allen Iverson, the NBA Rookie of the Year last season, has been charged with marijuana and firearms possession. There's a lot of negative things in my life that I try to get rid of, but they always stick around. Like, it's like you can hide from the devil, but he gonna always find you. He was in a car with that had pot and a gun and the driver was speeding. He wasn't speeding, he was in shotgun, but he got arrested and they put him on probation. <laughs> I got two jumps. Alan is loyal. If you're down with him, he'll do anything for you. And sometimes I think the loyalty had him keep people around that maybe you shouldn't have. <laughs> now you said, now you just said, you know, they, they judge you because of who you hang around with. Is, yeah. is your posse just ill? They've been through, they've been through a lot of things in their life. I mean, I can curse again. Yeah. I mean, they fucked up just like everybody else. You know, they made mistakes. Good or bad, he was a role model. He was a person that was so real. The tats, the cornrows. Why you gotta leave? Like, this whole thing was just like, this is who I am. And people loved him for that. But it's a gift and a curse. The way Alan carried himself, the way he dressed, some people liked it, some didn't. It's important that the players take their end of it get out of the prison garb and the, uh, you know, the thuggery aspect of uh, basketball that has, has come along with uh, hip-hop music. When everybody started looking like I look, the cornrows and tattoos and baggy clothes, that was just a great, great feeling. But it was bittersweet because I had to take the whooping for it. Robin Gibbon writes in the, in, the, in the Washington Post today, she said that's the body language of a thug, and he's got the reputation for what might diplomatically be called ungentlemanly behavior, and she's talking about the cornrows hey, and everything else. It suggests that, you know, success, wealth, all that is tied into this gangster prison attitude, and I just think it's a negative, poisonous message. If he wants to express himself with tattoos or with, with hairdos that are different from you would like to wear or wear jewelry that maybe you wouldn't wear or wear outfits that you wouldn't wear. That doesn't make him bad, it just makes him different. Because he's from the... Yeah, 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 yeah. He, keep it, yeah he keep it gangster, he do, he keep it gangster. He's a warrior, he's truly a warrior, you gotta love him. He's awesome, he's awesome. Because he's cute. <laughs> I clearly thought that they looked at him and decided that's not where they wanted to be. Something had to be done if you're looking nine, 10 years down the road. When Commissioner David Stern instilled that dress code, I'm thinking, uh-oh, this isn't gonna fly with Bubba. 
Under this new policy, off court, in public, the pros, the pros are expected to wear business-like attire. No more chains, pendants, medallions, headbands, or headgear of any kind. I think they're just targeting guys that look hip-hop, guys that dress like me. Maybe it's unfair, but I don't think he truly understood the effect and the impact he had on so many young kids. If he knew that, I think he would have done things differently in a lot of ways. He got into a period where he was larger than life and he was kind of hard to control. You know, he wasn't showing up for things. He was really late for things. Um, he wasn't really respecting the relationship. We were in Coney Island one time shooting the spot. We had two scenes left. It was kind of chilly out, you know, it was around six o'clock. And then he's like, yo. And I'm like, what's up? And he's like, um, yo, I'm out. What the fuck do you mean you're out? Like, we're gonna we got an hour and a half left, and we're gonna finish this great commercial that's gonna be a great look for you. This product looks great. Like, what are we talking about? And he's like, I'm out. And then he literally calls to one of his boys, and he leaves. And you know, this is not a like, okay, everyone come back tomorrow morning. This is permits, this is a crew, this is money. This is a big problem, right? He's got a great soul, and he's a great person. But he was just in this space where, like, he didn't give a shit about any obligations. Magic had a bad TV show. Shaq did a genie movie. How are you gonna embarrass yourself? <laughs> you have to be tolerant up to a point, and then you begin to ask, when is it doing more harm than good? When is it more than just a personal statement? Man enough to pull a gun, be man enough to squeeze it. Damn, you don't believe it. Anything to do with millions, I'm a big one. Somebody could do a rap album like the rap album that I made, and you wouldn't hear nothing about it. I'm a bastard case. Your fucking hands with my gas in your face. But Allen Iverson can't. I was disappointed in the lyrics because of his power to promote a positive message. I was disgusted with the lyrics because they didn't look positive to me. And we had a conversation, and he didn't understand exactly what I was saying until the backlash from everywhere else came upon him. This offends me as a black woman still calling us hoes, bitches, and sluts. It's calling us niggers. The album is, is weak. The lyrics are is whack. He needs to stay with basketball. He's rapping out his thing. We're not interested in legislation. I'm not interested in regulation. I'm not interested in uh, starting a boycott. I just want them to stop. John Thompson better call. You better, Alan. better speak to Alan. I think he needs to speak to the brother. I was early 20s. I never looked at how much of impact that I have on people. Kids that love everything about Alan Iverson were gonna listen to it. But back then, you know, I didn't look at it that way. If you are a hardcore hip hop fan, then this album is for you. If you don't care about hardcore gangster rap, just don't buy it. Yo! Alan Iverson's life is a book that he has always refused to open. And by refusing to open that book, I think people just say, how dare you? And as crazy as it may sound, and as untrue as it might be, as long as it sells newspapers and gets people to look at my television station, we're going to say just about what the hell we want to say about you. Trouble of a different sort tonight for one of the National Basketball Association's biggest stars. Allen Iverson in trouble with the law again. He could be headed to jail. Facing the possibility of some years behind bars. I got in an argument with my wife, cussing each other out, all kinds of stuff that ain't none of y'all business, but you know what it is if you're in a relationship with somebody. According to police 911 tapes, Iverson threw her out of their suburban home the night of July 3rd. Man, they even said I threw my wife out naked. She was not dressed at the time. Why would I expect somebody to look at me as a man if I did that to my wife. Philadelphia police say the 27-year-old basketball player burst into his cousin's apartment. I'm pulling out guns and stuff. Uh -uh. Where you pulled a gun at? He did have a gun. They said it on the news. He, he was, was armed, armed with a gun. gun. They come looking for a gun five days later, like the gun's still gonna be in the house if I had one. Were guns found or gun you in this late trial? No, I don't have firsthand, I don't have that information. Seems as though Iverson didn't necessarily brandish the gun, uh, but he perhaps had a gun in his waistband. They got helicopters flying over my house all day. They got media people in front of my house with lawn chairs 
and cooking out with cameras. Girl, get out of my face with that crazy that, that, stuff. That's, that's what hearsay. Rumors. Where you get that from? That's hearsay. Because somebody told it to you? True. Did Tawana tell you that? Yeah. Did Tawana, Did Tawana, Tawana don't ask me nothing. Did Tawana tell you that? I haven't spoken with you. All right, then. Don't go there with yeah, me. Don't go there with me. Don't go there with me. Have you want to keep it real, you keep it real with me. Because I ain't for no games, OK? Well, OK. Dog, they love you right now. They love you right now. But please believe me, the first incident, the first time something happened, they are waiting, man. They're waiting, man. They're waiting. They're waiting, man. We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player, and we in here talking about practice. The media builds you up to break you down. Bottom line. That's the nature of the game. If anybody tells you any different, they're lying. We're talking about practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? I've never heard anybody interpret that honestly. I know it's important. I do. I honestly do. But we talking about practice, man. What are we talking about? Practice? That's that sound bite that's going to define him. That for Allen Iverson was his I Have a Dream speech with Dr. King. They used that to portray him as a person who didn't like practice. That was not what he was saying. Your entire being now, your whole character, is going to be this. I fight to represent Philadelphia. That's how I became a household name. And every single year, after every season, you know, I got to hear trade rumors, stuff like that about getting me out of there. I just came from the meeting with those people, and I was upset. It was bad advice, and it was, it was a stupid decision that I made. This is what happened when you lose, you know? You go to the finals, and then the next year, you're out in the first round. This will happen, you know? I went in and talked to Coach, and I wasn't going anywhere. That's what I thought the press conference was going to be about. Alan, could you address what Coach concerned about your practicing habits? We don't get a chance to see you practicing. Can you clear the air about all that? Anybody tell you that I miss practice, if, 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 if a coach say I miss practice and y'all hear it, then that's that. Every question came, they were talking about missing practice, uh, uh, not missing practice, how many practices did I miss. So you and Coach Brown then settled the issue that he brought up on Saturday about practicing? And my response was, we talking about practice. Why are we talking about practice? Listen, we talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. What in fact he was saying is we're spending the time in this interview to discuss practice. He was not saying that practice is unimportant. There's no way I could be an all-star. I could be an MVP, you know, if, if, if I didn't practice. You see me play, don't you? Absolutely. You see me give everything I got, right? Absolutely. But we talking about practice right now. But it's an issue that you're... We talking about practice. I was already gone, but I happened to be watching the news, and I see him saying, practice, practice. We kept saying practice, like it's only practice. I ain't saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's why we in here having this talk, because of practice. I know what he meant. You're getting all over me for practice, and how about the game? But I would have grabbed him and took the hook right off there, made sure he got right off that day. OK, guys. It don't have to, I, I ain't going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. Yes, it was great for the press, but no, it wasn't good for him. Nobody looks at the whole comment that Allen made and what he was talking about when he made that comment. I'm upset. I'm upset for one reason, man, because I'm in here. I lost. I lost my best friend. He was talking about his boy dying. Ron was a very close friend of Al's who died a very vicious and violent death. Of all of the people that died in Alan's life, I think it hit him hardest with Rock. I lost him, and I lost this year. Everything's going downhill for me as far as just that, you know, as far as my life. And then I'm dealing with this right here. I don't want to deal with this, man. I don't want to go through this shit. My boy just died the other day, and you all are talking to me about practice. That's the whole comment. Go back and listen to the press conference. That's what he's talking about. Try to deal with what I go through in my life. My best friend, dead. Dead, and we lost. That's the entire, but did anybody? No, no, not at all. And that's the crest of how the media looks at Entrice Allen Iverson. Because of his candle, 
because of the aggressive way in which he will really express himself, people can conveniently turn. That's what I worried about. Y'all talking about what's gonna make me a better basketball player? When you understand that, that people human just like you, then that'll make you a better person. I'm trying to get better, you need to also. It's something that my teammates joke with me now and other guys on other teams, as soon as you mention practice, first thing a guy will say is, we talking about practice. We're talking about practice, to quote the great Allen Iverson. Practice. If somebody else, you know, one of the quote unquote good guys would have said something like that, it wouldn't have been a big thing, but it's me. We talking about practice. They would not play that full track. They'll play the sound. Allen Iverson could have been the most popular athlete the NBA's ever had. And I think sometimes his pride got in the way of that. If you don't want to go through what I go through right now, as far as being the bad guy in the NBA and all that, all this stuff, be fake then. Basically, that's all I'm telling you. Just be fake. But you're not fake. And I'm not going to do it. I'd rather not play, be in the NBA. No. One thing that, that I, I think about when it comes to, to that, always felt a certain way when people in the media, you know, talked about me. And, and you know, some of the things were true, but it's hard to deal with. It's easy to deal with those things when they're true, because you know they're true. But when they're not, it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to deal with. So I was a player that was criticized and you know what I mean? So I don't want to be that guy <laughs> on camera doing it to somebody else. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like the media, I always felt like the media um, hated me. But the way you, I had to realize that once I got older, this is how these people feed their kids. This is how these people survive. This is how they make, they make a living. You know what I mean? They don't care about him or her hearing what you say about their daddy. You know what I mean? They, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's their job. And, I, I, and it took me a while to realize it and, and understand it. And that's why now I don't hate the media so much. <laughs> <laughs>